So today we're gonna run some stainless steel on a thicker range. It starts with some uh, 14 gauge, two millimeters thick. And then we go to some 11 gauge, or actually that's more like 10 gauge, all the way to 3 16 material. Very simple machine. The DM1100 has uh, two belts with blocks, alternating abrasive media and scotch Brite, and the front one grinds from ref left to right, or sorry, right to left, and then the one in the back, the opposite way from left to right. You have a high friction belt that will hold a small part, actually down to a two by two, and um, as the parts pass through, media wears evenly because it goes perpendicular to the feed direction of the part, and you get a good, well-rounded edge. These are water jet cut parts. They have no dross in that sense. They just have a very sharp edge where when you run your fingernail, you get the white of it. So, in this machine, these belts, very easy to tension and to remove. You can make a belt change in two minutes. The official um, video from NS demonstrates that. Um, all you do in here, you adjust the pressure of these to get different grinding results, different edge rounding results, and you adjust for material thickness with the table being moved up and down. The ladder happens here. This is for material thickness, and this makes the grinding pressure. This turns the cross belt on. This turns the conveyor belt on, and then you can, on the potentiometers on the bottom, you can pick your speed for ease each. Today, we are going to run at full speed because we don't have super small parts. You would only reduce the speed of the cross belt when you run smaller parts so that you have less lateral force. Um, stainless steel, you would process between two and four feet per minute. We're gonna start at three feet per minute and see what we are getting. As you turn the door shut, you can see this red light. It will come off. This is whenever you do. Uh, have a safety condition, the red light will come on, so you need to remove one, uh, uh, all of the six possible safety conditions and the light will go off and you'll be able to turn the machine on. We have already set it to our 3 sixteenths material. We turn this on, we turn this on. Now all we do is take the part and we run the first one to see what kind of results we have. I'm not hearing a lot of sound right now, so I think it could be that we are a little bit too light. And when we dump the results, what we do is, the first thing that we want to do is we want to feel the temperature. And here, you see the white line around it, that is your radius, and you also have a white line, a little bit less, around your smaller contour on the inside. So this is already pretty good and like I say we have temperature in the part. It is about body temperature, maybe a little bit below it, so that is a very good temperature. At that point we can make some fine adjustments, maybe give it a little bit more pressure to the pressure. We can also go a little bit slower. And now the way you would run production on a machine like this, you can angle the part so that the brush all the edges at a different angle, also this one, and you can put them on the machine. Mark those parts, we will write on them afterwards what we did to run. We will run two different speeds on either side. You see the consistency in the parts and the edges. It's an excellent result. In 
product, you would put a table behind the machine, either with a tool to drop onto or simply with roller to catch the price because then one operator can keep this machine filled by about 80%. Larry is making a little bit of noise in the background. So these pipes we marked with 30 inch per minute, that's what we just ran, and it was medium on the on the grinding set that we saw. Uh, the very first part that we had here, the second side was 30 inch medium, and the first side was 36 inch per minute with the lighter set. Now for the rest of those, what we'll do it will go even a little bit harder. So we go three times more here, and we go two feet of it. And you can see those differences. And the rounding the corners a little bit more, so that may be more than what you are bidding for. That is totally up to you. All we want to do is demonstrate the different capabilities of the machine. As these are water jet parts, like I say, the edge quality is already very good. You don't have any draws to contend with, and uh, so therefore you get a little bit more radius. Now, over to a different gauge, very simple. Let's say we go to the 14th gauge at this point per millimeter. All we need to do is we're going to go back to our medium setting and then regardless of the material thickness, and then all we do is we crank this to the new material. And now from the sound you can hear that we are already in the conveyor belt. So I'm going to back it up a little bit more so that I'm lighting it. Heavy would be about an eighth of an inch below the surface. Light would be about 80,000 feet of the And at the same time, we are going to go. And I want to give you another demonstration. This machine is not so super critical how you set your material thickness because it's a brushing problem. So you could run, for example, materials of different thicknesses, even though know, that's not necessarily recommended because you want to get different results. Now, from the sound, you can hear, of course, that the 10 gauge is going to be hit a lot harder than the 20 gauge because it's thick um, about 20,000 further up into the front. You're still running at 24 inches per minute. So, this is, and the temperature is lower again because you, you lower the pressure. 24 inches per minute. And relax. And this is 24 inch per minute. But it's medium because again, it's a higher part. 
So when you see this video and when you get the cards, you can remember how that came to be. So again, the demonstration was that it's not super critical as to how you set the machine to your sickness as long as the pressure mode is lifted and it's holding the part. But you could run parts of two different thicknesses if you wanted to do. It is not super critical. The critical thing is simply to hold the part. And then the rest of the adjustment you make with your brush. This last one